the both the oath of the notary as well as the oath of the um, signatories. Um, some say that's not enough, but really, um, if if put it this way, if we're getting down to the to the brass tacks of whether uh, sealed under oath or signed under oath or taken by my oath is not enough then the use of underlining, which you've probably seen a lot of Roman documents, if they're going to start picking at that, then the underlying is going to be something far more serious. For example, we haven't got to the new section on Roman document procedures yet, but it will be there, and it will cover some of the old chestnuts like the use of brackets and the fact that an underline, if it is underlined by a typeface word, highlights the word as a mistake, or if it is an underlying, well, underlying ultimately means that it's a mistake. It means it's it's uh, it does not exist on the page. Oh. So it's a it's a way of rendering uh, signatures null and void. Oh. Okay. So so I'm giving that to you as an example to say if the traditional use in a notary's attestation of saying taken under oath which is more than adequate, if that is to be contested, then underlying is going to nul, uh, nullify the signatures anyway. So I would like you to be able to see that material qualified on the court sites in the next couple of weeks. And what I would be doing if I was you, and this is not advice, but this is just a suggestion to you, is now you've got that material, I would wait and see the, the rolling out of the will and testament first, to rebut the presumption of intestate and then follow up because you're in that position because you haven't done it yet and then follow up with the uh, the deed and the birth certificate. What do you think? Okay, that sounds good. Yeah? I mean, are you in a position where you've got to move like right now or are you, have you got a couple of weeks up your sleeve? Uh, it's nothing urgent. I don't have any court case or anything. Um, and actually, I think the will and testament would obviously be a lot easier. Yeah. So you've got everything in stage. Let me wrap up. If I've answered your questions now, let me wrap up now and just say, hang 10 until you see what happens with the will and testament. But it seems like you've got all the documents you need in good order anyway. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. I'm just going to answer one more question and then get on to the next caller. Thanks for those that are uh, coming in and, and uh, coming in line to ask questions. I really appreciate it. It helps everyone. Um, I have the question about uh, babies. This is from uh, Jen. The question is about uh, is there a remedy for people that have um, have a baby uh, or have uh, children. What we've been uncovering, and this is again part of this getting this background research, you've heard me talk about guardians and certainly in the, in the canons we've tried to reveal as much as we can in the background of this role of guardianship where the state is assuming the role of guardianship. It turns out and this may floor a few people, it turns out that one of the biggest strengths in their system to claim guardianship of the newborn and children where they ignore everything from the parent is because the parent is intestate. Because guardianship powers appear to have been streamlined when we look at the Wills Act of 1837 through the UK legislation, where the presumptions of the guardian are introduced into the more modern concepts they were doing in will and testament. They were already anticipating in 1837 that the majority of the population would not be executing their will until death, therefore giving the state the power of guardianship until death. So the short answer to that, Jen, is we need to nail the whole will and testament research because I believe the answer for those that have children and infants 
is to rebut this presumption of intestate and because it then brings the guardianship claim back to whoever is nominated as the general executor. The general executor under your will and testament is going to be, if, if qualified properly, the guardian, the general guardian as well. Okay. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to uh, speak to Idaho. Hopefully this works. See if we can get Idaho. Idaho, can you hear us? Hello, Frank. Hi. This is John. I'm friends with uh, Greg and Ron. I've got an ongoing bankruptcy case that actually turned into a bankruptcy case from the probate case. But uh, long story, but uh, I'm still hanging in here after three and a half years fighting as, as, as best I can. Um, originally, I was named uh, by my mom and my dad as both uh, for them executors of the, their estates and also trustee of their, their trust. Uh, my brother lied, uh, got a forced conservatorship of my mom just before she died, uh, lied, court believed everything, wouldn't accept anything that I filed. My mom uh, had written several affidavits saying that my brother lied. They actually forged documents. They got a forged, uh, I mean, they have a foreign judgment against me now. That was, the original case was in California. They moved up here to Idaho to go after my property. I have a $555,000 judgment against me. Yeah. Deep before the sheriff's sale, I filed a bankruptcy, and now I'm understanding that if I file a will and testament more specifically as general executor for my mother's estate, um, I could possibly stop that. Okay, a couple of things they do. They claim under statute that you can't prunk, uh, sorry, prunk. you can't non prunk, you can't. Um, uh, now is then, in terms of your your will, which which actually uh, is contradicted by um, statutes and, and, and principles of law. So it, it's a contestable element, but it does mean in in the short term process that you're kind of going to be pushing uphill if you want to claim the role of general executor of your mother's estate. If you want to claim through will and testament that you are the general executor, or you have been nominated as the general executor of the, uh, of the legal person um, that happens to be the same name as you and it's recorded, well, that changes the dynamic already, yeah? The, yes. the, 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 the first thing it appears is you've got to get to a point where you stop their actions against you and then claw back on the other matters. So it appears that they're... As, as usual, their best form of defense is to attack, yes? Correct. Uh, in okay, so, so, so you, if you, I, would, I would say, and this is not advice, it's just a suggestion, I would, similar to what I said to the previous caller, um, when's your next hearing, just generally? When's your next hearing? Um, my next hearing will be uh, September 27th. Okay, all right, so there's going to be a couple of weeks ahead. I'm sure you'll keep abreast of the material on the websites and I'm sure that you'll be reading it and talking to Greg and, and I'm sure you'll get it as it first comes off the, off the press. But I would be looking at preparing your own will and testament and getting it recorded prior to the next hearing to ensure your standing in court as the general executor is corrected and the, and the record is corrected. Yeah? Of both my the state and also my mom's. I no, yours, yours is the issue. You, 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 you risk complicating the matter. At the moment, they're going after you and they've already, already consumed your mother's. You've got to sort with that first. That's the immediate issue. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Your, your, your other issues can be dealt with and that may take some time. But right now, you are physically under attack by them. That's the issue first. Would you agree? Yes. Okay, so hang ten on how this is unfolding in material, but it is all totally relevant to you. But I would I would be saying that your will and testament being recorded in the first instance is is of utmost urgency. And then the second is, as an executor, um, you will be formalising the roles in this court, and the matter um, ultimately needs to be resolved. And and I would be then 
um, ordering the trustee, whoever the trustee is named in this, because you are the executor, ordering them for a tracing and using the bankruptcy, which itself is an audit, ordering a tracing for all the other property that is not currently in account because it is a probate, yeah? Uh, correct. My brother was... And probate the estate, bring it up to, bring it up to um, satisfaction, bring it up to equalisation, yeah? Now, would that be... So the thing... Would that so be I just want to say... Of, of my estate mm-hmm. in the bankruptcy court or my yes. brother who was yes. unique as trustee of my mom's estate? Okay, the for, the next, for the next month and a half, anything dealing with your mother's bankrupt, uh, bank, mother's trust is irrelevant until your matters are cleared up. Your standing is cleared up, your will, your position is cleared up. Um, it is not relevant and for the next, certainly for the next short period, okay? okay. Once okay. your matters have been cleared up and your standing is in a clearer position, then I'm sure you will be in a much better position to pursue those claims of uh, malfeasance in terms of your mother's estate. You follow? Yes, I do. Okay. Does that answer your question and your issues in the short term tonight? Yes, it does. I've got my work cut out for me. You do? I tell you the hardest thing. And, and this applies to when I said this last call, and, and it's important to reiterate. I did say the last talk show, and, and I, I do encourage people to look and listen to these previous calls because I can't cover everything the same every every call. We wouldn't have the time. But I did say that the role of executor is is the most challenging role that we will ever undertake because it requires a complete change of mindset and behaviour. And one of the things when we're dealing with their system is they trick us going back into behaving as a trustee. And once we go back like Pavlov's dog and start salivating and behaving like a trustee, then they can argue that we have failing to behave as an executor and they can continue to roll over us. So the hardest challenge I, I would suggest to you is not just the paperwork, but it's diving into this material and getting your head around the fact that you are indeed the general executor of the state. You are the occupant of the general executor of the legal person estate, similar to the name that you were born with. All right? Yes, uh, now I'm assuming because it's both myself and my wife that she should do it for her estate also. I would suggest yes, but I would suggest again, what you don't want to do is complicate matters. Your wife, I presume, is not facing bankruptcy court at the moment? Uh, it is a joint bankruptcy because the, the property was... Ah, okay. Well, then, yes. The short answer is yes. Yeah. Yes, both of you need to consider it. But uh, there are a couple of... Um, yours is more important than your wife. I'm not being sexist. I'm, yeah. I'm merely saying that the law itself used to make the provision that married women and, um, and uh, lunatics did not have a right to... Um, to obviously submit a will. So the, the, the husband's will, for better or for worse, is still the primary will, okay? Yes. That's in the Roman system. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll drop off now, and, and, and if has that answered everything for you for the moment? Yes, it does. Thank you very much, Frank. Okay, good on you. I'm just... Turn it off, and I'm going to go to. Okay, I'm just going to go before I get to the next caller. Please, if you if you want to speak, I would love to hear from you. There's one more call waiting, which I'll answer in a moment. But if you do want to speak, just press uh, star eight and come into the queue, and I'd be honoured to to take your call or your comment. Uh, before I answer the next call, I'll just go through a couple more questions into the chat. Um, Guest rank asks this follow up question. He says. If we are presumed to be paupers under church guardianship, should we not be revoking that assumption? We should be revoking, and we will be revoking that presumption, absolutely. But what I think, and this is again, remember we said that form, in their system, form 
is placed above substance. 